Thank you very much. And I'd, I'd like to thank AFPI in particular for the, um, inviting me to give a talk here. Um, I've a, a particular affiliation with the North, to be quite honest, because I, some of you might know I'm an avid motorcyclist, and so Northern Ireland's like Mecca for me, and Joey Dunlop's like God. <laughs> And uh, I, I used to think it used to rain a lot in the south until I've gone to the Northwest 200 for the last few years and got completely rained out. <laughs> um, I suppose why I'm also interested in talking, and I'm thrilled to see this app for big conference because uh, we're, we're kind of sister ship down south, a, a comparable organisation called Chagas, made up of about, about a 1,000 people. And about half of Chagas is all about research around the agri-food sector, and about half of that is around food. And really what I want to do today is to give you a kind of an overview of it. I tell you, I suppose what I wanted to get across, you know, although Bart frightened me a small bit there, <laughs> but some of the excitement there is um, in Ireland about the uh, uh, expansion agenda. And, um, and really what I, uh, in talking about innovation, and some of us believe that it's true innovation really we get added value, and added value will take care of some of that volatility. Um, protection that Bart was talking about. And really in the talk, just to simplify it, I just ask very tr three questions that I'll try to answer a bit. And that is why we feel the need to innovate, why there's an urgency to innovate in the Republic at the moment. And why, what we need for that dairy innovation, the kind of structures and the kind of uh, things that we're putting in place. And what do we work on? What horses in Cheltenham do we bet to, to uh, I suppose, maximise what added value we can get out of it. And I suppose just to say again, you know, the agri-food sector is our most important indigenous industry, and just taking some figures from to to last year, it's 11% of Ireland's exports, 8.6% of employment, 9% um, growth, and uh, worth about 9.9 .9 billion. UK is still our main um, uh, home, 42% of all exports, 32% continental EU, 26% international markets, but China's going way up for us. Um, and I suppose, and I still find it remarkable, I'm not really an, ec an economist, uh, but I find it remarkable if you track the history, I, I, I suppose in some ways the EU, it was fantastic for Ireland to join the EU, and some things it kind of restricted us a bit. But if you looked at 1985, in 1985, Ireland and New Zealand produced about the same, about 5.5 billion litres of milk. In 2013, Ireland produced 5.8 billion litres of milk, which wasn't a huge growth rate. But New Zealand produced about 19 billion litres of milk. And you can see in the graph down below, it's in the number of cows, the stock, and the stocking rate. It's the increased intensification that was possible there. And, I, and I, I don't think anyone in Ireland believes that we can get that sort of growth, because there are a number like socio-economic type of things, um, but we still only use about 20% of the land that we, have, that we could use for dairy, for our dairy purposes. So in some respects, the shackles are off, <laughs> and, and I suppose there is tremendous optimism when we come out of a very grey, dark, <laughs> depression era, uh, and, and there is a lot of optimism that agri-food is going to get us out of this. And, and, uh, and we believe that innovation will play a big part in that. And I suppose you'd say, well, yeah, he's just scientists rambling on again, you know. But I hope to give you a couple of examples where we are making an influence. And, um, um, and I just want to show you about some of the areas that we're going. But I would say, like, say, if you took like a co-op like Carberry, who are very close to us in, 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 um, in West Cork, they consistently pay the highest price for milk, and they and they have a very large innovation agenda. And you know, we have been a major part, uh, been a partner of them over the years. But what I wanted to say, and getting back to my Northwest 200 comment, it rains a lot. I like things that are simple. It rains a lot in Ireland. Rain grows grass. Cows eat grass. Cows produce milk. And it's something we often take for granted. But it's almost an organic production system. And I, and I suppose the milk that's produced from grass, as Linda was talking about there, we feel is higher in polyunsaturates, things like conjugated linoleic acid, and we don't take enough advantage of that, for sure. And Board B have launched a big sustainable programme on it. We have a, a dairy levy project just started called Pasture Butter, where we're looking at uh, composition of 
at a, at a minute level at uh, pasture-fed um, uh, uh, butter producing milk. And the Chagas program, if you like, mimics that. So we have the grass breeding, uh, genomic selection, and my, my uh, partner in crime, Donna Berry, has done a lot of work on introducing a national program in genomic selection. We're starting to see the benefits of that. But really what I want to talk about is food innovation and food safety. And so, and I wanted to share, which is, I suppose, some of our vision for maybe how we could change ourselves to be more uh, interactive with industry. And what I w want to say is that over the last few years, the food programme has increased, has increased our level of contact with industry substantially. Last year, we interacted with about 246 different companies. 27 of those were, were major projects that we had with them, and we get an income of about 3.5 million from that. But if you looked at our Moor Park site, I suppose we'd have a vision for building up a, what we call a food innovation hub around the area, um, where Chagas would, and this would be the programme that we've had for the last half a century, would pr provide the software. The hardware, we run our pilot plant as a separate, as a, uh, 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 as a separate company, Moor Park Technology Limited, that's co-owned between Chagas and the dairy co-ops. And also, we increasingly have in companies, including Irish and inter international companies, present. At present, we have 12 companies with significant activity in Moor Park people, I mean. And what we want to do is build up a series of company embassies that will link into the pilot plant and link into the food, and in that way, build up the commercial agenda. And um, why would we be interested in that? Because even with international companies, we're interested in foreign direct investment, we're interested in partnering, tripartite relationships, with Irish companies uh, as suppliers, and we're technology providers to large multinational companies. Which brings us to me to our raison d'etre, if you like. And our raison d'etre is, is really, we're a development organization in the food program. We're not really an educational one. We have a lot of PhD students and so on, but we're there to help the Irish industry. And, and, I, and so we're there to help with science-based innovation, I, I give some examples down below of the types of innovations that we have been involved with. You, you might be familiar with Dubliner cheese, which was produced in Moor Park and licensed to Carberry some time ago, which has been a tremendous success. A couple of bit probiotic products there, one um, a probiotic margarine that was sold by Kerry, another uh, a Pilgrim's Choice a probiotic cheese. Ireland produced about 12% of global exports in infant milk formula, and it's done it three main sites in McCroom uh, by Dan Ohm, um, in Wyatt in Askeaton and uh, up here in, um, in Cavan uh, by Lakeland, or by Lakeland, by, by Abbott, sorry. <laughs> and, and, but there is a growing interest from the actual co-ops themselves, particularly the bigger ones, in producing uh, infant milk formula or infant milk formula based themselves. I suppose in one way it's a very lucrative thing for Ireland to be supplying into the infant foreign manufacturers, but I suppose there is some debate about whether it's the multinationals that are extracting the, the greater margins out of that. And I suppose if you look at the programme, just to give you an idea of the structure of it, we are like uh, 200 research staff, about 230 on last count. We run off a budget of 15 million euro. We're in two sites. In, in Dublin, with Ashton, which is a meat centre, and, and in uh, Moor Park, which is a dairy centre. We run events like these, which are gateways, which are mainly for industry every, every year. And I was asked to just plug our next one, which is meat at gateways, which M-E-A-T at gateways, uh, which is on May 21st, where we will have a lot of people from the meat industry coming in. And just to give you some idea of our site, this, this is the site of uh, Moor Park in Cork. You'll see the newer building on the right, which is Biosciences, which is all about how food affects health. Uh, in the middle, you'd see uh, our main technology department, uh, which is to do with ingredients, encapsulation, food structure, and so on. And then you have Moor Park Technology Limited. Uh, we have three dryers in there, the largest being 120 kgs, which the infant formula manufacturers use a lot. And more and more, we have companies on site, um, Irish Dairy Board uh, being a significant one. The company itself runs like a hotel, you come in, you use it, but it's, it has a turnover of two million, makes a 20% profit, and it's been an ex extremely 
um, successful model for us. We, we plan in, in, in yellow and in red there to expand this in the next few years. And so we're going to put ex ex significant expansion into pilot plant facilities, building up a technology hall for the future, and so on. And also this innovation hub that I was talking to you about. But where do we put our efforts, which is the third question I was going to ask, and that is where, what do we work on? And I suppose there's even a bigger question. And, well, and, and I suppose when we look to other, uh, you know, real um, movers and shakers in dairy, we look really at two countries in, in, in particular, and that is in New Zealand and, and, and in uh, Finland. And I suppose they differ from us because they're both monopolies, if you like, to, to, to a large extent, Value and Fonterra, but they're very, very different companies to each other. Value put a, put a big emphasis on value add, but it's a totally different model. They have, you know, a very high uh, cost inputs, but uh, and they're mainly fresh, and and there's uh, and there's economic complexities like selling way into Russia and things like that. And Fonterra, a large commodity, and I suppose what we always challenge ourselves with is where do we, how do we make an impact on the industry? Is it through Im improving commodity production? Uh, more lean processes and so on and so forth are getting more value add. And I suppose, and uh, Bart has spoken a lot, and I'm not going to say much about it because I don't, I don't know an awful lot about it, to be honest, but these, in commodities you see an awful lot of volatility. And I suppose our model for protection against volatility would be that, if, um, that the more value add that you can introduce into the system, the more protection you'll have against that value added. And particularly, say, some of the co-ops do that very, very well. Some of them don't do it so well. But we're in a very, very different situation. Uh, this is what I call the real map of Ireland. This is where the milk is. <laughs> and so what you see here is, and so you can see here, you say this is Glambia, which is the largest producer. But you can see like, you know, uh, Lakeland is, a, is, is very, very significant. And I, I, what I think is very, very significant is, I think Ireland's working more than Ireland, you see Lakeland, buying pictures and stuff like that. And you're seeing an awful lot of Ireland working as an island, which is, I think is a really fantastic thing. And, and so one thing, I suppose, that separates us from, from the New Zealand value situation is that not all these entities can have their own R&D or, or want to put a big capital in, uh, infrastructure in place for our R&D. And so that's why we exist. And what I want to talk about now is just that's how we're structured and whatever, but this is what we actually do. And so what we actually do is we market our program as delivering R&D solutions to industry. And so even though our, Ireland doesn't go really that much in for institutes, but it does in, in, in food and agriculture, and even in lean times, it's, it continued that investment. And I would say in dairy, we only work in three areas. And we do it. We do, we, do quite a bit of work on, on milk quality, not so much on safety, because really dairy doesn't have much of a safety problem. But, uh, and we do quite a lot of work, even with yourselves, on the, on the quality side. But as regards innovation, these are the three areas. And as Bart says, cheese is a major area for us. We've been working for 50 years in cheese, and a lot of people, we would have people who have worked nothing else in their career except cheese. They're cheese scientists. And the, in dairy ingredients, we work a lot in infant milk formula. About half our program is in infant milk formula. And it's a, about half is what Mark Fellon, who heads up that department, he calls it smart ingredients. A smart ingredient is a powder that when you add water, it turns into something a little bit different. And I'll give you an example of something about that and maybe adds a bit of value. And the last area is an area that's completely different, and that is in food and health. Because more and more, and this is an area where really value is specialised in, 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 in uh, food and health side of things. And so what I want to do is I just want to touch on each one of these briefly and kind of show you the things. But what, what I do want to emphasise is that we, our programme is centred around this simply because we feel that these are the areas that will give back a dividend for research, remembering that we're development. Cheese, and I think as Bart says, uh, pointed out, is very important to Ireland. It's worth about half a billion in 2010. It's increasing all the time. It represents about 30% whole milk utilisation. And I'm just showing there up to 2010 for a very good reason. And that is because we were traditionally a cheddar nation. 
But you can see there that a lot of the innovation is happening outside of Cheddar. And this makes a point for innovation again. You have companies like Tipperary who put a huge emphasis on Swiss and Emmental cheeses. You have uh, increased mozzarella production, you have milk powders, you have uh, cheese for ingredient uses and so on. And all of that requires innovation. Um, and, um, and I would say that we, in, on cheese, we, have, we work in a number of different areas. We work on cheese diversification, cheese functionality, cheese flavour, cheese microbiology, which is up at about, I'd say, about 10,000 cultures now. We work in healthy cheese, which is taking things out and adding things back in. Low fat, low salt, probiotics, whatever. But I did want to give one example of a project I think that's, it, that is being significant. And it, it was a kind of a change for us. And that is, we started, we, and so we have a research program that has been very well funded to the, to the Department of Agriculture, a competitive program. But about two and a half years ago, Kevin Lane, who is here, who just uh, took over as head of the Irish Dairy Board, ex Kerry, and he came in with a, a, a quite ambitious plan for the Dairy Board. The Dairy Board handled about 70% of all the exports in Ireland uh, in dairy products. And what he wanted was, he wanted an innovation wing of it, and he put some faith in us, and he, we started up an innovation centre in Park, which is a public-private partnership with themselves, which is based solely on a commercial basis. In two and a half years, we've developed 300 different variants of cheese. The nice thing about this is they bring us the market opportunity. So they're out there, they see it, and they say, can you make a feta, can you make a whatever? And I suppose the first real, and we've made 300 different variants, we have about 11 leads, and there's four of those cheeses going to go commercial. And the reason I say that is that's a huge attrition rate. You know, but that's what you need to do to, to, innovate, in, to innovate. I think you have to speculate, <laughs> if you like. And the first, cheese, the first one to roll off this conveyor belt is a cheese, and you might have seen some of this in the press, that was launched in Riyadh, and we all went to Riyadh in, uh, Decem in um, December. And, um, and this is a cheese that's made from milk powder. It's, uh, and, and basically, uh, it's reconstituted, doesn't involve starters uh, with a, uh, a patented process using uh, 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 different uh, conditions um, and it makes a labne cheese which is a huge consumption rate in uh, Saudi Arabia and so th this is a very good example of a powder a smart ingredient being produced now, now the Irish Dairy Board have, have teamed up with Al-Wazin Holdings they're going to put a 20 million euro investment in this plant uh, and twill import powder. Um, second example I'm just going to give is on infant, infant milk formula. And in infant milk formula, a lot of the people that work in Moor Park would have come from the infant milk formula industry or are back there again. And so, and we would do, run customised training courses, encapsulation, process technology. They have a big presence in Moor Park because they use the pilot plant facilities because their own facilities are simply too large to uh, do developmental work. And I just did want to mention about, um, there was a, a, a big debate on whether um, Danone would invest. And Danone invested in a 10 million euro, or, or 10 uh, ton per hour dryer, which is the largest one in the infant formula industry in McCroom. And they say there, they did it for a number of reasons. Um, uh, but, but we were one of them, and Enterprise Ireland was another. Um, and so it can have a big effect um, um, and, 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 and we were, there was a, another couple of sites that were um, thought about for this particular innovation. And this is just an example of another innovation, I won't go into it too much, but it's just showing that here if we, we can make a probiotic, we can make a probiotic yogurt by adding Hansen cultures. We can grow those Hansen cultures and we can spray dry it and it ends up as a powder. And this is a, a spray dried probiotic powder where the cultures stay active. The last area I want to talk about is in food and health. And in food and health, or, sorry, in food and health, um, we, we have a different approach because food and health is a very big area. And so we, we, we um, collaborate an awful lot with the universities, uh, in particular UCC, and we have 
quite large pro involved in quite large programs. And I want to really talk to you about um, two of them. We have uh, Food for Health Ireland, which is the four companies coming together to mine milk for um, um, bioactives that would affect health. And they have a number of lead functional compounds that are being progressed by some of these companies here. But one of the areas I did want to talk to you about is, is because some of us feel that this is one of, the, one of the most exciting areas in science at the moment, but it's also one of the most exciting areas for food. And that is the whole area of gut microbiota. I suppose it's an area that's been overlooked by, um, it's been overlooked by uh, uh, basic nutrition, but the food that we eat um, is handled by a, a bioreactor of anywhere from 400 to 1,000 bacteria species that's in each, each one of us. And each one is different to each other. These um, bacteria uh, can have a huge influence on our health. And I just want to show you two projects of it. It's, it's more than just about probiotics. It's about how food programs the bacteria in your intestine and how that affects your health. And it's like almost like a galaxy of stars within us, within each one of us. And, um, and the food that we eat has an effect on it, antibiotics have an effect on it. When we come into this world and we start uh, have, you control someone's diet like infant milk formula, that has a huge effect on it. Um, but as you get older, it starts to deteriorate. And it's not very often that a particular area of science is on the cover of Nature, which is one of the top journals, but also on the cover of The Economist, because a lot of the food industry is majorly interested in this area. And it, I think Lin Linda had mentioned, or someone had mentioned about sequencing. We've invested a lot in sequencing at Moorpark. We've a, close on a million euro, and we, we, we're the best equipped in Ireland at the moment for this. We have four sequencers now, and basically what we can do is we can barcode people off their stool about what bacteria they have to do in the test. Kind of nasty. But. And uh, last year we had a paper in Nature uh, with Paula Tool, who's head ahead of it. At, at, and basically what we showed is that the gut microbiota composition correlates with diet and health in the elderly. And what we showed, like if you think of this galaxy, this is 500 elderly people. These people all live in a community. These people are in hospital. And these people, these are long-term hospital, they have a lot less star. And so the idea would be, why would the food industry be interested in that? Because we've shown it's diet related. And so could you have diets that increase diversity and would put people back here? But I just want to show you one last thing, just because of last weekend. <laughs> and, uh, and if, because it just turns out that we just had a paper accepted in GUT, which is a fairly good journal, on a study that we did on the Irish team that you might be interested in. And basically, you know, the um, rugby players are obese if you take them by their BMI index. And so what we, what we wanted to do was, we wanted to see was it reflected in their microbiota. And so we looked at, at, at them and compared them to normal BMI people uh, and people who were uh, clinically obese. And we, and we looked at everything in them. And basically, this, if you look at BMI, athletes there are the rugby players, and what you find is like, these are, like as, as I said, they have, they have a BMI that's like a, what, what an obese person would be. But if you look at them waist-hip ratio, they're more kind of fitter, or lean body mass, or body fat, body fat obviously. But the diff in, in this particular case, they were training for the World Cup, and, and uh, they were on very, very high protein diets. And so what we did is each spot here represents uh, like a 40,000 readout on microbiota from their stool. <laughs> and so, and so what, what, what we could see is that in these, in these, the green and the blue weren't separated. In obese people and lean people didn't really separate as much as the rugby players did. The rugby players separated out completely. They were completely, they were complete, not only completely different to each other, they were completely different to all the other group. And this, we believe, is because of the protein value. And what these graphs are showing is that it correlates with the amount of protein that they're eating. And you say, why would you be interested in something like that? Because athletes and whey protein is a huge area for the dairy industry. And so, I'll finish on that. 
So, um, and I just want us to answer those three questions in, in a very short way and say, why do we need dairy innovation now? And I would say, to add value to the expanded milk pool, if it just goes simply into commodities, then I think we'll have a problem with capacity and we're going to have a problem with uh, volatility. Um, what you need for dairy innovation, you need definitely market intelligence. And that's why I think working with the dairy industry, and these, particularly like the Irish Dairy Board now in that project, that's evaluated simply on commercial success. Nothing else, not publications, nothing. Um, knowledge and pilot plants. You need knowledge and you need a sophisticated pilot plant facilities to do it. And where do we put our efforts in? Well, we need to put our efforts in, in on the commodity side too, in processing and scale and efficiency. But I believe we, we really need uh, to be ahead of the game on value add. Thank you very much.